Guys, welcome to Charting Cryptos and Commodities. Let's jump first into cryptocurrency. Where are we on the big chart, the weekly chart on Bitcoin? Again, you can see it was an up day for Bitcoin overall, but you can see on our weekly chart where we are still decently below the 200 EMA from where Bitcoin had spiked up. And of course, has been sort of, you know, hanging out here around the 18,500 mark, something like that. Uh, again, it was a bit of an up day today, 3.25%. But, you know, again, just two days into this week, we can see that we've got a spinning top, almost really a doji there. So lots of indecision in Bitcoin. What are we waiting for? We're waiting for, of course, Bitcoin to spike up as it has done in the past, and move up through the 200 EMA and just take off and just drive up. Uh, again, we'll be looking to see what happens on the STC when it goes into the green. We saw that happen, sort of a fake out there back in March, where things went up for two weeks and then, of course, started devolving and then crashed again, and that was when we really plunged below that 200 EMA. And of course, we will wait for things to move up above the 200 EMA to initiate any long-term moves. Of course, during that whole time period, we'll be looking at the half-day and the two-day, but overall, just where we are now. What about Ethereum? Same thing in the last few weeks. Ethereum's moved below the 200 EMA. EMA. It did that before back in May as it started moving through, then jumped up in mid-July and August, and then down it has gone through the month of September now into October. So we'll wait and see as things continue to progress. If we look overall where the Bitcoin, the, Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency market is, we look at BITW. That is the top 10 crypto index fund weighted based upon market share. So, of course, Bitcoin's the largest portion of that. But I think that's always valuable to look at and just sort of see where things are overall. And you can see on this weekly chart that, again, things have not taken off at this point. They tried to start moving up in mid-July and then sort of died on the vine there. You look at the two-day chart, that's when we first get our 200 EMA, and we can see how far below that the two-day chart is. We look at the half-day chart, and you can see that it has been below for quite a while. So again, we'll be keeping our eye on things and, of course, hoping that at some point this all is going to end and our cryptocurrencies are going to take off. Remember, Bitcoin is the big kahuna. As I say every week, it is the tide that comes into the harbor and, uh, harbor and either floats or sinks all the boats. And when it starts moving up in earnest, you can expect to see everything moving up with it. It will carry the way. Now, let's move on from cryptocurrencies into commodities. And I have thrown the charts up based upon the biggest moves this week. And you can see what happened actually over the course of, well, let's, let's go down to the half day chart. You can see we're over the last two days this week trying to push up through the 200 EMA. This is, of course, gasoline with that OPEC meeting coming up and already calls for cutting production. Of course, what happens when you have demand steady or increasing in supply cut? Well, price is going to consequently go up. And we can see the first green candle in quite a while. Still red on the STC, but that may be a change. And so pay attention to how well this STC has worked for you in the past on this weekly chart. And of course, keep a good eye as things are pushing through the 200 EMA on this half day chart as to opportunities that might present themselves. We are above the 200 EMA on that two day chart and it has just gone into the green also. So again, if you liked paying less for gasoline, well, guess what, my friends? That may be ending. We will keep an eye on things. We saw where things peaked 
back in May and early June, and we were so happy when everything was in the red. Well, you can see it yourself. That's what's so empowering about these charts. You don't have to listen to the news and be fooled by people trying to get you to stay tuned and watch their commercials. You can watch the charts themselves. What about natural gas? Well, nat gas is still going down. It's up for the day quite a bit, 4.59%. But as far as the candles go, we can see that it is still in the red, still has some downward pressure on it. But check out where we are on the half day. We're just below that 200 EMA. It was up for the day, and we went from red to green, so keep your eye on the prize as we move forward. That two-day, still red, and but it is above the 200 EMA, so watch natural gas. Now, go back to the weekly. This is Total Energy Fund from, of course, our friends at Rogers. Um, and you will see there, as we look at the Rogers International Commodity Index Energy Total Return, you will see that, of course, it is up a little bit for the week. Still in the red on the STC oil overall. Again, an up week that's starting first green. We've seen it about four weeks. That's oil overall. What about the Rogers? And I'm going through how much these gained over the course of the day on Tuesday. We look at the total metal return fund, and you can, of course, see as it is spiking up, of course, those you've been with us this week so far, gold, of course, trying to, to gain a little energy and move up some. We see things now touching the 200 EMA. It was below it. This is on the weekly chart. Copper up some. In fact, every commodity that we track is up except wheat. We'll get to that at the very end. We can see a green spinning top here on copper. It's still well below the 200 EMA. We look at the Rogers uh, total return fund on commodities. We see commodities are above the 200 EMA, ticking up a little bit, still of course red on the STC. What about cane, sugar cane? Of course, uh, up some for the day, still sort of sliding sideways. Basically a doji is what we have so far this week, still in the red on the STC, but above the 200 EMA. Gold, of course, we can see gold was below, and now has, we've seen, we talked about this on the show earlier, we have seen at least the candlestick spike through the 200 EMA. That may finish above on the candle itself by the end of the week. What about silver? Silver, of course, moving up quite strongly this week, going from red to green on that weekly chart on silver. What about a cup of joe? Coffee. Where's coffee? Uh, coffee's still languishing. I mean, it's above the 200 EMA on that weekly chart. But again, just sort of hanging out there with some sideways moves up just a little bit for the day. Uh, well, 0.99%, but compared to all these other commodities, not a lot. Soybeans, again, above the 200 EMA, still negative on the STC, still a red candle there. We look at where things are on the Rogers Total Return Fund on agriculture commodities. And of course, you can see where it's just sort of sliding sideways up a little bit for the day. Corn, of course, corn had spiked up over the last few weeks. Well, I'm sorry, st started spiking up the first week in August, second week in August, third week in August, then the first week in September. And since then, it's sort of been sliding sideways. It's up a little bit for the day. But again, you know, it's not all that far from where it had spiked up previously and still well above the 200 EMA. And again, we'll keep keeping, we'll keep watching that. And of course, wheat, wheat down for the day, but of course, it has been in a nice up move for the last several weeks. You can see where we initiated a trade there back when we saw things first cross over, and we have kept that going. We'll see if we can get up to our 21.45% gain. And again, we would balance a trade like this off with a much lower position size because we're risking 10% to make 21.45%. That's okay. Again, if you're adjusting the size of your trade based upon the volatility, we talk about that 
in our trainings. My friends, thank you so much for being with us. We always love to have you. I'll put at the end of today's video that training that helps you understand how to reduce the size of your trade to account for volatility. I think you'll get a lot out of it. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.